Hello and welcome to the Monday, August 26, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse on Friday published a blog post talking a little bit about well some of the issues he is running into with the parsing honeypot data. Parsing honeypot data isn't so far always interesting because well it is by definition malicious data. So of course you have to be quite careful as you are dealing with this data. Now in this particular case now in this case, Jesse relied on the well-respected Pandas library for Python in order to help him parse the data. But uh, even if something well works in development, it doesn't always work in production. That's sort of one of the good old uh, rules of development, in particular if you are dealing with rather diverse data and different encoding types. And that's kind of uh, what Jesse ran into here. Can be. Uh, quite tricky actually to cover all possible cases when you're uh, dealing with uh, various encodings. Probably the best rule here that I have learned over the years is stick with one encoding, don't convert. In this particular case, a simple replace helped Jesse at least get his script running again. But if you are a developer, uh, try to understand uh, some of the UTF-8 encoding and such that you often run into to see how it exactly works, what some of the pitfalls are in particular when you're talking about normalizing data or uh, then also uh, converting data into other encoding schemes. It looks like last week CrowdStrike had another minor issues with its sensors. Uh, the problem was uh, performance issues. Apparently what happened was that some of CrowdStrike's cloud services were slow responding. Now there are certain features within the CrowdStrike sensor that will request data from these cloud servers and then wait for response coming back. So uh, these are synchronous requests and not asynchronous where it keeps on going while it's waiting for the response to come back. Well, due to the cloud services responding slowly, this then ended up slowing down the entire system, not just the particular sensor software. The issue went away once CrowdStrike was able to solve this performance bottleneck in their cloud infrastructure. And Cscaler last week published an interesting blog post with details regarding the latest version of what they're calling the copy bara malware. This is Android malware. It copies the appearance of a banking software. It's only seen on Android in part probably on iOS. You don't even have the APIs to do everything that the software does. Of course, it does request permissions, but a user assuming that this is non-malicious software may not necessarily be that surprised by the permissions it's asking for as often. They're somewhat cryptic here. Like for example, it requires accessibility services, which is a huge red flag in the sense that this will allow the malware to remote control the system. Other little interesting thing is that it does use MQTT as a command control protocol on port 52,997, so not the default port of 1883 or 8.8.8.3 that you typically see for MQTT. And then we got a little bit of tricky vulnerability by Sonic Wall. Sonic uh, patches vulnerability in Sonic OS. And the reason I call it tricky is there's sort of some uh, different uh, information out here. Some sources are saying that the CSS score is only 8.7, but they're then talking about an access control issue that can lead to remote code execution. The current Sonic Wall bulletin gives it a CSS score of 9.3, putting it well uh, strongly into the critical category, but then saying that it's again an improper access control vulnerability that could cause the firewall to crash. So patch it. I think that's uh, my best advice here. The uh, CSS score of 9.3 certainly indicates that there is more going on than just the denial of service when they're talking about uh, crashing it.
And the exact language here from uh, Sonic Wall is that it may potentially lead to unauthorized resource access in specific conditions, causing the firewall to crash. So that unauthorized resource access here uh, certainly uh, has me believe that there is more than a denial of service issue here. Well, that's it for uh, today. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, uh, like and subscribe uh, to this uh, podcast and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.